Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And this episode, <laughs> we are going to talk about a new movie. Yeah, we're going to do a new one. It's been a few weeks since we did a new, a new release. Uh, this is a film called Nails, which is a, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's a British film or an Irish film. I'll say British. Mm. It's set in Ireland, but there's enough other part, like there's enough British elements to it that I'm going to assume that it's just a general British film that's set in Ireland, rather than being an Irish film. But I could be completely wrong. Uh, I mean, the main character Scottish for 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 a start, <laughs> and then the the nurse who's around the whole time is a is a popular English comedian called Ross Noble, who I heard the voice and went, "That oh. sounds like Ross Noble." And I actually looked it up and thought, oh, it is Ross Noble. Oh, how could I mistake that nose? That nose is so <laughs> distinct. But, uh, yeah, so so we're going to talk about this. We'll start spoiler-free, uh, and then we'll warn you halfway through before we get into spoilers. That is typically how we roll. So, yeah, I, I knew very little about this movie before before I, before I we sat down and watched it. I, like, I, I knew it was supernatural, but that was about it. That is all I knew. That's right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was waiting for Tim to give me a hot take or something, and he just, just leaving me hang, as he does. And he's doing it again! I'm just... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm giving him wait? natural avenues, natural avenues for him to make a witty comment. The, the, the Tim I, brand of humour that we expect and love. Well, yeah. You know I usually wait. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. You, you, you ask me my opinion. Okay, but, I'll, I'll, I mean, okay. If, you, if you're asking me if I had heard about this, I think... Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I'd heard... I think maybe I might have seen an article about it on, like, Bloody Disgusting or something, because the title sounded familiar, but I pretty much knew nothing about it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, the lead character played by Shauna McDonald, she is notable just purely because she was the lead character in The Descent. So if you, if you saw that like oh. that... Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even realize it's been a long time since i seen it. Yeah, I, I only know because I noticed her name and went, oh, wait, I think I, that was her from that, but... Uh, so, so yeah, so the plot of this one, the premise, is this woman who's very sort of fit and athletic, you know, the exact opposite of me and Tim. She goes jogging every day. Hey. Oh, do you go jogging every day, Tim? I walk. <laughs> <laughs> I walk to the car. <laughs> yeah. Um, she, she gets hit by a car, though. She gets hit by the car at the start of the movie, and it's a movie set in the hospital. She, she's, you know, she's broken from top to bottom she's got one good arm she can't speak properly she's using like one of those uh like computer predictive voice things K kind of stephen hawking s but more laptop based rather than his chair yeah. and she, she's you know her husband or her daughter are coming to visit her but she starts to see something creepy and supernatural popping in at night that's this tall ghostly figure who she thinks is there but no one really believes her and it kind of you know it's a supernatural ghost movie in a hospital and that's that's kind of the the idea so we'll save anything else plot-wise for spoilers, but uh, I always ask the question after I give you the premise. Tim, mm -hmm. did you enjoy the Nine Inch Nail? I mean, Nails. Did you enjoy <laughs> Nails? Oh, I absolutely love... Just kidding. This is awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't even yeah, filled, this... Tim. I, I saw your swerve coming. I saw it a mile off. <laughs> this, uh, yeah. I, I guess if I could sum up the movie in one word it would be generic uh yeah so, i think i think that's fair i, I think okay <laughs> you know i i, I think because i i wouldn't say it was awful like i, I don't think right, it's right it's, yeah. it's not bye bye man it's not none, none of those I, I think it's just painfully generic and in the middle yeah yeah like i i do like the the central premise uh i think is a good one um you know like being confined in a hospital and you know, after suffering a bad accident and not really having full control of, you know, a lot yeah. of your bodily function, leaving you in that vulnerable state. That's, like, a great premise. Uh, she can't, she can't walk. She can't even scream. Like, yeah. You know, like, she, she's so, like, just confined to this bed. And, like, she, she has no help. Unfortunately, I think to make that movie work, you have to be very inventive with how you tackle it. And I don't think yeah. this movie achieves that. And as a result, it feels like we're never out of this goddamn room. And it just feels like we never do anything interesting. It's... Yeah, it's pretty tedious. Uh, when anything does happen, it's very, like, generic jump scare. Uh, you know, the ghost ends up looking, yeah, you know, pretty boring. Uh, even the way the story unfolds, it's very predictable. Uh, I was watching this with my uh, fiancé, and 
literally like every plot point she was like oh i think this is gonna happen and like five minutes later i'd be like yep <laughs> so, you know, i like that you hesitated exactly. before you said fiance because i gave you shit for it last time you did that so you were yeah. you're were, you were going yeah. should i just say girlfriend should i just say no nah, i'm good i'm doing it screw peter i've said it i don't it's a weird word to say it sounds like it super weird. fancy you know? it's not like you want to brag about it like because uh, my girlfriend it doesn't sound like a brag but right, she's like, yeah. oh my fiance yeah that's right that's right i asked yeah. she said yes <laughs> that's right I don't, I don't i don't think we're uh you know we know each other but i don't think we're familiar enough for for me to use uh her actual name in front of you so uh... <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were going to say for the audience also you're full of bullshit because you've done it before so you know it's fine but uh, yeah, like she, uh, I, I was actually like pretty surprised. Just not, not that, uh, you know, uh, she's not smarter. She's much smarter than me. <laughs> oh, but like, look, look at him dodging usually... the, 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 the holes there. He's almost digging himself a grave. He's like, oh, no, no I'll just dodge that. Oh, she's smarter than me. I swear. Uh, but no, I, I just mean that like usually when we watch movies, like you know, we usually don't make it a point to be like, oh, I think this is gonna happen or blah 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 or whatever. Oh, but yeah. I was surprised. She was like, oh, this is gonna happen, and that's like, yep and yeah it, it's pretty predictable and then do you, when do you, do you see the stuff do you know it even has tim it has that scene in the middle where we get the research scene of looking up the history of yep. the building and the history and you know where the ghost comes from and the oh here's the backstory explaining why he exists yeah and then i would say there's uh, so other than the, kind of the genericness the blandness i, I think there's like two other kind of big problems with it one um i think a lot of the times because of like the situation that the character's in and everything they're going for um these scenes that are supposed to be kind of serious that i think it's really hard to take seriously like the i don't know the um whatever you call it like the keyboard thing she was using to speak i, I don't know it, it didn't really work for me i, I think sometimes mm. it came off as probably maybe like unintentionally uh funny and, and there's like a few other things like that that i just had a hard time there, there, really taking that serious there was a big moment right before the end that was hilarious and how bad it was it was so silly oh yeah that i just couldn't help but cackle as i was watching it and i think it was just <laughs> a case of oh you you've just failed me at this point because i'm not even taking this yeah. seriously uh, yeah, I think the, I, Ghost is super yeah, generic. I think I like, what you're about. Yeah, she's she, she's just lying there the whole time, and that's fine. Look, that could be a movie. I think, I think they, they because they take away her voice though, and I get why they do that because they want to make it. Oh, she can't even speak. Like that's how vulnerable. She can't even scream. But honestly, it just makes it really hard because this is how I describe the movie. It emulates what it feels like to be in a hospital bed for two hours. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're stuck in a hospital bed and you can't do anything. That's honestly what watching this movie feels like. And I don't think yeah, that's what that, they were trying to evoke. <laughs> oh, no, definitely. And uh, I would say the other thing that's kind of, um, I, I think that kind of hurts it is, um, yeah, not to give anything away, but towards the end when things are, you know, kind of ramping up to a climax, all of a sudden we're getting and seeing stuff that we haven't the whole movie. And it kind of felt like there was. Oh, it, it ramps up for no reason. It just suddenly turns to 10. Yeah. With, with no build up it just all of a sudden the ghost wants to just do everything now rather than be subtle and, and sneak about yeah and like earlier in the movie you kind of get the feeling that the ghost has like maybe a goal or limitations but then by the no. end it's like oh no i guess not i guess it's no goals doing whatever <laughs> no limitations no rules just just whatever and <laughs> You know I like my rules, and it, it bugs me oh, there's yeah. a lack of rules. And the fact is, is early on in the movie, I was thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be smarter about it. Maybe this is going to play with this idea that she, she, this isn't real, and she's just like, like imagining this, and it's about all of her fears. Yeah. And I, I was like, I, you can almost do a really smart movie about this, where it, it, it plays it purely psychological, and it's all about her sort of overcoming her demons and her fears and she sees herself as a monster now because she's like deformed from her accident and stuff like how she feels about that like i feel like you could do things with that but it's not that it's just a ghost haunting her movie <laughs> it doesn't yeah. do anything <laughs> uh i mean it, it, it plays with the idea slightly that she can see the ghost because she you know technically died for like a minute and came back mm -hmm. and that's why she has the sight now but it doesn't do anything with it like she she kind of researches it finds out about it and then nothing ever really comes of it so much to the point that in the last act of the movie, I actually wasn't sure if the other characters could see the ghost or not. 
They seem yeah, to be reacting as if they could, but I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, the, there's like a scene earlier uh, where she tapes something, and then, um, you know, they're looking at the tape, and uh, yeah, it was kind of confusing to see or to understand if she could see it on the tape and they couldn't, or if no one could see it. Like, we as the audience, we obviously saw it beforehand, but then when they watch the tape, you don't see anything. But then she's telling them to look at the tape. Yeah, and... it, it would be fine if she couldn't see it in the tape, because then it would just be a case of, okay, it doesn't record. Even if she can see it at the yeah. time, it doesn't record. That's fine. But she's still pointing at the screen going, it's there, it's there. And it's like, no, it's not. Like, we can't see here yeah. either. Uh, so, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. And that was another big plot stretch for me as well, is the idea that after one, like, scary night, they let her install cameras in her hosp- hospital room that she can control and, like, switch between. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, come on now. <laughs> I I thought this was really strange. And, like, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the family paid for that, like... I, yeah, the... I assume so. Yeah, because uh, I feel like that's not an expense. I mean, the, the it's a pretty like rundown hospital or whatever, so it seems like they couldn't afford it. But uh, yeah, it kind of seems weird to have them be like, "Yeah, sure, whatever you want." Like that's a pretty big installation that they go yeah. with. Uh, so I don't know, lots, lots of weird things like that. Um, it's funny actually. I mentioned the lead character Scottish. She would never actually know really though, because she spends most of the movie not being able to talk. <laughs> so you can't even yeah. hear. Uh, most of the accents are Irish, uh, very thick Irish, except, of course, Ross Noble, who who is not Irish. He has uh, got that thick Newcastle accent. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't know what that accent is that he's got, that's what that is. Uh, the nurse who comes in and sees Caesar. That's his voice. It's a, it's a very hard voice to take anyone seriously in. No offence to anyone <laughs> from Newcastle, but it really is. Uh, he always sounds so soft and jovial in a, in a Newcastle accent. But... Uh, so, so no, and that's kind of the movie. Like they're, they're in the hospital bed for most of it, and <laughs> a lot of it's her try. It's that annoying horror thing where one character believes there's a ghost in the house, and the husband doesn't. So she spends most of the movie trying to convince him that there's something going on, and he doesn't believe her. It's kind of a lot of that, but more annoying because he's not even around to experience some of the weird stuff. He just comes in after the fact. And he's like, "Yeah, honey, you sound a bit crazy here." So <laughs> it's just it's that trope turned up to like eleven, and it, it's just really frustrating to watch. Uh, but ultimately, like I think, it's a hard movie to get passionate about when we're talking about it because at least if it was laughably bad, like the Bye Bye Man or something like that, we could right. we could yell, we could scream, we could be like, "Oh, this is so stupid, and this is so that." But it's so mediocre and just generic that it's painful to actually think of anything remotely interesting to say. These are the <laughs> hardest reviews to do, Tim, on this show. They're the <laughs> hardest because there's just nothing. I, I just have to start making fun of you and other things else in the world because it's the only thing we can do. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's fair. Um, well, I mean, not to make it fun of me part, but... <laughs> well, that's very fair. Um... <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, you're right. Like, at, by the end of this movie, I wasn't angry. I wasn't like, oh, man, I, I just wasted so much time, or oh, I'm going to go on Twitter and make fun of this oh, yeah. so bad. It was just like... I don't... Eh. I don't think I've pressed stop when the credits hit as quickly as I've done. I, I think it was still because when it cut, when it ends, it cuts to the name, the title of the movie. It cuts to nails, right? Nails was still in the stream when I pressed stop. I wasn't even waiting around. Like, no, thank thank God for that. Done, right? <laughs> Moving on with my life. So, uh, you know, I guess yeah. we're spoilers now. All right. I think, I think we'll, I actually think we've went further than we normally do in Spoiler Free, but yeah, full spoilers from this point on for Nails. So, there's a big <sighs> subplot in the movie where Dana, who's the character, Sean McDonald's uh, character, who's in the bed. She... I, I kept, uh, for probably about half the movie until they got to this point, mm. I thought that her name was Diana. I think <laughs> just from the accents. Diana. Like Diana. I, I, I can't do an Irish accent. I apologize for whatever that Deanna. was. It came out with. <laughs> <laughs> top of the morning to you Dana <laughs> I can't do it I'm sorry that was offensive I think um, so <laughs> I was going to do an American accent to annoy you but I'm not going to do it <laughs> uh, anyway so no I, I think um, so we have this subplot going running throughout the movie where they're, they're both like coaches they're both like athletic and they both run like uh, like training sessions at the local gym or whatever it is they train athletes and they, they both train teams. Like, he trains the guys' team, she trains the girls' team. I wasn't, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what the sport was. I didn't catch the sport, but it doesn't really matter. And he's like, oh, well, well sure, banged up. Uh, I'm, I'm the, 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 you know, 
the faculty is letting me t take the uh, take the girls' team as well, so I'm covering your loads. So don't worry about it. And it's all fine. And then he's like, "Hey, like we got this new girl," and he like holds up the phone with this video of her just running on the uh, the treadmill, and she's just turning and smelling at him. And like I'm just like, "This is weird. Like, why did you take this video just to show your wife?" And of course, the wife immediately has this look in her eyes. It's like worried that he's going to cheat on her. Like th that's immediately like there's no like grace period. There's no okay, this is fine. And then it just repeatedly, he keeps mentioning her. Oh, she's picking up her daughter at school. Oh, she's doing this. And then later on, she's on Skype with her daughter. And, like, this Angela character just sort of pokes her head and goes, Oh, hey, I've not met you yet. Oh, hey, I'm just helping out with your daughter. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt with you. And then she's like, Oh, do you have to talk through that thing? Do you have to talk through that? You know, pointing out her, like, disability right now. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then, of course, the ghost actually shows her footage of them having, like, not, well, not the sex itself, but, like, you know, afterwards, like, had her leaving and them kissing because the ghost now, can do that. Now, was that supposed to be real or was that, like, the ghost messing with her head? Like, you know, just trying to put these thoughts into, I don't know, her <laughs> brain or whatever? Tim, you asking me that implies that the movie actually answered that question because it, it did not it did not i was assuming it was real but honestly they never actually like he reacts very yeah. angrily and it plays like he yeah. could be just covering up because because from his point of view even if he is having this affair like how could she possibly know it and see it so he would deny it anyway but yeah i don't know the I don't know. only thing that kind of makes me think maybe they're not having an affair is that if they were, he's doing the worst job in the world of oh, like hiding it, covering yeah. it up. Like he's showing his wife videos of this girl, like having her pick her daughter up from school, having her come by to the like, like if you were cheating with someone, I don't think you'd be like, oh, now I'm going to go see my oh. wife who's in the hospital. You want to come with me? Honestly, like, when you get to the point where she's over at the house while the daughter's on Skype, I'm like, Okay, even if he's not having an affair, this is really, really weird and inappropriate. Why is she already yeah. hanging around at the house helping out? Like, I mean, sure, sure, there might be nothing going on, but it's just weird. Like, why, why is she so close to the family already all of a sudden? Yeah. This is strange. It was so strange that, like, at one point I started to think, like, oh, like, is there going to be a weird thing where her or the husband, like, ran her over to try to get her out of the picture or something? Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing. So you, 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 because she actually comes by the hospital at one point and Dana gets really upset and starts shouting whore at her. And she's like, get, get away from my family, you whore. And she's like, she's like it's, it's okay. She's upset. And, she's, Dana, and Ashley's like, okay, I'll just go wait out in the car. It's fine. It's fine. And she sort of plays it off. And then he gets angry, you know, the husband gets angry with Dana and he goes outside, and I'm thinking, okay, when he gets back to the car and he talks to Ashley, we'll find out if it's if it's true or not, because they'll talk to each other, and we'll see if they're actually, actually in a, a relationship, or if it's like, I'm sorry about that, I know, like, she must, she's been delirious and she's thinking these things. Like, one way or the other, once they're talking together away from her, we, like, we'll find out. But, of course, he gets to the car, and she's already been killed by the ghost, and then he dies immediately, so we never actually get anything else to tell us one way or the other which of course the entire movie the ghost has not cared about anyone else all he's doing is no. tormenting dana and then all of a sudden at this random point in the movie he just starts killing everyone so this is what's so frustrating because it's so isolated in this one room and you find out that you know nails was this guy that used to work in the hospital and he died in that room specifically in this kind of like closet thing yes yeah, suicide there. he killed himself a suicide yeah so you kind of get the idea maybe he's confined to this room maybe he's yeah, angry maybe. that this woman's in it now because that's all you ever see i mean you don't get any other like well, you mentioned it earlier like there's no sense that anyone else can see him really you think but that then... if, you think that at first but as the movie goes on it adds on this extra backstory stuff where you find out she was in this hospital as a child when she had meningitis which would have been the same time that he worked there and while he was working there the reason why he killed himself is because is because he got caught basically killing all these kids who were in the hospital it was it was like this angel of death where he would like if they, if they, if they were suffering he would just like euthanize them but you know you know regardless of i i don't even think he asked the kids he just sort of like, okay you're clearly in pain so dead uh so he, he did that to several girls so it, it then later implies in the movie that she was the one who got away like he was going to do her next so he's doing this now because he wants to finally put her out of her misery it feels like such a forced like plot point convoluted like, it, it, like it's convoluted as yeah. shit like at this point i'm like why why do we need this like just have her happen to be in the room because 
the whole thing about being in the same room, like, I actually like that idea. I'm a big fan. Like, me and Connor just a couple of weeks ago did Rear Window for In Flux, and I love that movie. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that that movie does is that it always feels like it's in the room with uh, Jimmy Stewart's character. Like, you always see outside the window from his vantage point. You never go to a different angle where he couldn't possibly see. So you always feel like you're in the place that he is and that you're confined in the wheelchair with him. And if this movie wanted to do the same sort of thing where you're always with her, I mean, it breaks that rule anyway because it goes, like I say, it follows the husband to the car. So mm-hmm. throughout the whole movie, it sticks with her and then all of a sudden it starts breaking its own filmmaking rules by following him to the car and following, like, I mean, it cuts to the nurse a couple of times and maybe the, mm-hmm. the head of the hospital once or twice throughout the movie. So it doesn't actually follow that anyway, but so maybe that's an unfair criticism on my part, but it, it, it could follow that rule if it wanted to and do something with it. Uh, but instead it's just dull as shit. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> whereas in Rear Window, it's a technique that makes you feel like, oh no, we're watching all that. But the thing is, in that movie, it's all about watching all the neighbours and there's things going on, like you're seeing different things happening and you're starting to put clues together. She's, she, she's not seeing anything other than this ghost at night. She can't do anything. People just don't believe her. So she's on her computer, she does a little bit of Googling and that's it. There's, no, there's nothing else to see. There's nothing else interesting happening. So... Yeah, just to go on a tirade about yeah. how, how uninspired the, the <laughs> film making is. Uh, oh yeah, dear. but it it really does get frustrating because, yeah, it's out of nowhere, you know, you spend the whole movie thinking, oh, basically this thing is after one thing confined in this one room, and then, yeah, out of nowhere, it's just, like, all over the place, like, killing everyone in, like, you know, big, crazy ways when it's like, oh, I thought this was just kind of like a, you know, quiet slow creepy ghost or something yeah and, and uh, the, the daughter who's like around for some of the movie like she like helps her mom in a wheelchair and she's like you know pushing her around and i try to get out and like this, this is where i got confused can the daughter see the ghost because she seems to be scared enough that she can see something and that she's wanting yeah. to get out and she believes the danger is there but at the same time like it never really establishes that well or not she can and then eventually, like, the mother sacrifices herself. Dana sacrifices herself. Like, to get, the daughter gets out and she shuts the door behind her and locks it. And then the ghost, you know, the movie ends basically with the ghost killing Dana. And this is what I was laughing at. Because it, it picks her up, like, force style. And just, like, yeah. hits her against the wall. Up, up, really up high. Like, you know, ten foot in the air, just buying her against the wall. <laughs> and it just looks so goofy and silly. And I was just laughing. I was supposed to care that she's been killed. And I was just giggling to myself because it was... The first, to be fair, it was the first time I gave a, a positive reaction, I suppose, in, in the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, there's a, I think a few scenes like that where it's really trying to go for like a big emotional, you know, swoop, and instead it's just so laughably, you know, um, all over the place or whatever that it's definitely isn't coming, or at least, yeah, I didn't react the way I think the movie wanted you to. And um, that ending scene, I kept wondering, like, uh, like how far away are they from the front door? Like, could like, did you really need to like lock him in there? I mean, and it's just a ghost too. I'm assuming it can probably get through the door once it kills her. But uh, I don't know. That's true. But the movie just never addresses it. We never have to worry about yeah. it because it's just you know. Uh, and and uh, 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 here's here's the thing, right? So here's here's a way the movie could have been interesting. So let's say they let her still speak, right? One okay. of the things that happens is she wakes up in the middle of the night and there's a creepy man with long hair sitting next to the bed who turns out to be like the, the owner of the hospital or whatever. And mm-hmm. he speaks, and he goes really kind of like, he's very cryptic. He talks about the meaning of death and, do, oh, did you feel the, the dead hands on you when you when you died for a minute? And I thought, okay, this guy's going to turn out to be a ghost as well. And it, then he turned out to be like the, the head of the hospital. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. I, I thought... I thought he was going to turn out to be a ghost. And I thought maybe that's how you make the movie interesting, is you have various people come and speak to you, and it turns out most of them are spirits. And it's only mm, the okay. the one who's, you know, dangerous, and, like, maybe that's who she uses as a, a defense or something. And, like, again, I've not really thought about it that, that heavily, but it's, that was another avenue. But instead, he speaks to her cryptically once or twice. He then sh- shows up towards the end, thinks she's crazy, and gets killed immediately by the ghost. That, that's all that <laughs> happens with him. Like, the, the, his character was so pointless. I feel like every pretty much everything in the movie is pointless. Uh, like That's fair. Yep. Um, <laughs> like, uh, when at one point the nurse is talking about how everything is, like, you know, like, rotting and, you know, uh, the hospital's, like, out of so much money and stuff. And, and like, I kind of kept thinking that, 
okay, like, you know, the place is really cheap and, like, falling apart. All right, that's going to come into play at some point. But, like, no, not, not really. That's true. It doesn't at all. You're right. Um, and the uh, and, and kind of similar to what you were saying, uh, there's a, uh, I guess you said, like, a neighbor, like, the person uh, in the room next to her that she kind of communicates with, uh, which, kind of like you were saying with the long-haired dude, is I thought that was going to end up being another spirit that she was talking to. Um, yeah, it was, uh, which, it was... Whoever was next door was just, like, buying once for yes, twice for no on the wall. That was how they were communicating. Yeah. But then uh, all it builds but, up to is the daughter goes next door to, like, talk to the person, and it's like a jump scare where she, like, jumps out of the bed and looks deformed, <laughs> and that's it. Like, that's, that, that's the entire thing. But I wasn't sure, though, like, was she possessed by nails, or was that even her that was actually banging on the walls, or was it nails pretending to be her or something like again just another very pointless like i don't know where thing i don't know it's a bad script i mean that's basically what it boils down to <laughs> it's a really bad script where yeah. nothing really has any weight nothing really matters and you don't really like any of the characters so there's like are. there's little nuggets here and there that is like oh this this could have been cool maybe but like yeah there's like that you one... said you would have there's that one shot of him like coming down the like nails coming down the hallway and he's in silhouette and he's running his nails across the wall oh uh, yeah, yeah that's an okay shot like, you can tell that's for the trailer like oh here's a big iconic looking moment where nails is going to become one of the big horror icons he's not but like <laughs> this is what they were kind of thinking or it actually it's kind of like freddy at the start of name on Elm street when he's like yeah. dragging his nail he's uh you know his, his knife nails across the yeah. across the and, wall uh, and, it, and it is a um that is definitely the best way to see him in, in kind of a far distance in silhouette because uh, once you see him up close, it's pretty bad looking. Oh yeah, it's a crappy CG thing. It's, yeah. it's bad. Yeah. And, and uh, no, But like, I, again, I do like the idea of, you know, someone kind of being stuck in this weird, creepy hospital. Like, you know, that in itself is not a bad idea. I kind of like the idea of a um, like a, you know, serial killer that, uh, you know, keeps their victims' uh, fingernails. I thought that was creepy, although it is very reminiscent of uh, the comic book Nail Biter, if you've ever read that. I mean, kind of, it kind of reminded me of that. But It's an okay idea, but it only happens in the flashback, and it's never it's never actually relevant to anything else for the movie. Other like, than the fact that they, like, oh, why did they call him Nails? Oh, I guess this is why, but it never, yeah, yeah it, like, it never seemed like that was a part of his the way he would torture you or something like it, there should have been a scene where she woke up and like her nails were missing or something you know <laughs> it, it's his name and that is it there's nothing else that it like it doesn't do anything with it in the entire movie it's, it's irrelevant yeah. again so <sighs> yeah i mean there's core ideas we could see how they could take the core element and make it into a good movie but the script is just so bland and generic it's not interesting in doing anything else the scares are bad the characters are just boring and uninteresting the, 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 yeah, but that's that's the movie. Un uninteresting and dull. That is basically it. Tim, do you want to rate this some bitch? <laughs> are we, are we ready to rate this thing? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it a three point five. Uh, it's like uh, I, I think I was dancing between that and a four, but I feel like a four I would have enjoyed more. Like again, <laughs> this isn't a horrible, but there wasn't much enjoyment either. Yeah, it's hard. I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with the four. My, yeah. my my reason just kind of being... Just, just comparing it to other things that I've rated various things. I feel like... I, I don't want to give it a 3.5. I don't think... Honestly, it's, it's not... I know this is a weird thing to say, but I feel like it's not intricate enough to, to want a half point, if that makes sense. So it'd either be a yeah. three or a four, and I feel like a three is just a little bit like, too low like a, th a three feels like they were doing something fundamentally wrong like you know in terms of the shooting or the editing or the mm. acting and it's not like anything like that was that bad other than you know again like a few yeah. scenes that it's were really un funny but uninspired it's just kind of going yeah. through the motions it doesn't elicit any response it's just just what it is. It's just like, there, here it is. Here's a movie to be shot out. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's upsetting, but here you go. So, 3.5 and 4 out of 10. Uh, not enthusiastic. 
Because obviously there's some movies where you're like, oh yeah, it's so bad, it's good. I'm giving it a four, but you know, seriously, <laughs> yeah. this is this is it's still quality stuff. Uh, th- this is not that case, <laughs> and this is just really really dull. So yeah, uh, a better version of this movie, I would say, would be uh, Insidious Three. Ah, yeah, okay. Not in a hospital per se, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think yeah. there are some uh, similarities. Because she's in a wheelchair for the movie because she's in an accident. You're right, yeah. There's, there's things there with that. Um, okay, that's a cool comparison. So, no, I, I guess that wraps up Nails. So you can, of course, let us know what you think of Nails in the comments <laughs> if you have seen it. Uh, you can like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. Uh, you can support the show there. Uh, of course, the perks you get, you get to vote in the one vote a month per, for an episode. Uh, this, I mean, the vote for next month is all winter-themed horror movies. Obviously, we're getting near the end of the month now, so that's got a little bit of time left before before mm-hmm. that closes at the end of the month. Uh, there'll be a new one next month. You also get access to the vault. Uh, well, everyone gets access to see the vault. You can actually, or not the vault, sorry, the crypt. The vault is the 1.21 version. The crypt, which you can get a link to in the description below, is a list of movies that have been submitted by our patrons. That, that's what you have to be a patron mm-hmm. for us to submit the movies. But everyone can see it. The link's in the description. But that is uh, basically a list of movies that have been submitted that we will occasionally from time to time pick one out to watch or maybe put them in a vote for Patreon or that kind of thing. Uh, we'll be doing one of those soon. Cause we're, not, we're not done one of them yet. So I'm going to make a point of picking one in the next few weeks mm-hmm. to, to knock one of them out. So you can uh, check that out. <sighs> Tim, anything else you'd like to add before I... Um, <laughs> just uh you know start every day by telling someone you love them I, I don't know <laughs> um, uh, this is just uh, it's getting married so everyone's about love 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 everyone should be happy like me Blech. oh i am not happy <laughs> trust me i love my fiance but uh I, I hate myself, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, the honeymoon period's already over. You know, you can cancel the wedding before before you do it. Like, you already feel that way. Oh, no, no. But that's, <laughs> not, that's not what I meant. I did. Come on. You, everyone knows. Uh, I Well, I think we both hate ourselves, so... <laughs> uh, let's, just, let's just sum up. In this one episode, he's implied that he doesn't actually want to get married. He's already miserable. And two, <laughs> he, he, he went out of his way to say that he doesn't think that he's smarter than his wife-to-be but I'm pretty sure that's what he meant deep down inside. So, <laughs> he is digging so many holes. I'm basically going to use this episode as blackmail if he ever upsets me. Like, Tim, I'm going to send it to her. I'm going to send this episode. Well, luckily, uh, she watched Nails, so I, I think the, the <laughs> prospect of watching a review of it, she will not be too... I'm not going to watch that. Damn it, that's foolproof. I can't deny that's foolproof. <laughs> anyway, that is us, guys. So thank you very much once again for watching. Keep watching scary movies. And we'll be back next time with something else. Goodbye.